First, they ignore you. Then, they laugh at you. Then, they fight you. Then, in my words, they lie to you and join you before you win. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Welcome back to the channel where I share with you another very important historic milestone in the crypto timeline, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, Australia's biggest bank, and currently the world's about 45th biggest bank, depending which data you look at, is now allowing its customers to buy and hold Bitcoin. Before we get into this, a free, easy and appreciated way of supporting this channel is by simply hitting that like button, subscribe if you're new, ensuring you hit the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. Also, watch out for the bots. I will never ask you to contact me via WhatsApp or Telegram. They are bots. Stay away. So you know you're the crypto guy within your circle of friends when all of them send you pretty much the same message at the same time. This being that the CBA is to add crypto to its banking app. This cannot be overstated how important it is. And if you don't appreciate Bitcoin yet, or you believe it is not legitimate, how much more proof do you need? People are making a fortune out of this. Taxation officers have legitimized it through taxing it. Countries are adopting it. Multi-billion dollar corporations are investing heavily into it, and now the biggest bank in Australia. Now you'd think when I first heard about this, I'd be happy and excited. But believe it or not, my immediate emotion was in fact anger. And let me explain why. Gather round children, it's story time with Uncle Adam. Going back many years when I first got into the crypto space, I recall clearly when the Commonwealth Bank of Australia stopped me from buying crypto because they deemed it to be a scam or not suitable. They were stopping my money that I had earned in my account from purchasing what I wanted from a legitimate crypto site, that being CoinSpot. And in fact, I can even recall one of my earliest YouTube videos in my crypto journey was in fact berating the Commonwealth Bank of Australia for stopping me spending my money on the greatest financial opportunity in the history of humanity. And why this announcement recently made me angry was because for years, they have stopped and dissuaded countless millions of people across Australia and billions across the world from investing in the future of money. And years later, they come on the bandwagon saying that they will allow its customers to hold and use Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies via its 6.5 million user banking app in a bid to appeal to young customers and keep pace with rivals such as Square and PayPal, which already allow users to trade and spend Bitcoin. My point that I would like you to consider here is that you don't need banks to buy Bitcoin. In the past, they tried to stop it. And we all know that they have been buying it in the background because if anyone gets money, it's of course the banks. And they knew that their industry was dead within years of Bitcoin launching. Through their lies and deceit, they misled you to think that this was a scam, that this was not real. And all these years of opportunity have now gone. It's not too late for you to get in. But the point is, countless banks around the world, not just the CBA, have, in my opinion, purposely misled you from getting into the greatest financial opportunity of countless lifetimes. As I mentioned, they actively took steps to stop me spending my money on what I want because they claimed that they were trying to protect me. Now, I just want to step back a little bit before I get too ranty just on the CBA here. When we see organizations such as the SEC and other centralized bodies saying, we don't want you to invest in crypto because we're here to protect you. I call BS from the highest mountains. And I'll tell you why. 
How is it that I can pull all of the money out of all of my bank accounts, walk into any casino 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and blow a life savings by putting it on the roulette table without anyone trying to protect me from making a financial error? Yet when it comes to me investing in something that I've researched and is completely open source, immutable, and borderless, oh no, 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 no. We can't let you invest in that because we need to protect you. These organizations are utter liars. It is all one big scam. And now that we are coming to the next part of the cycle, and I'm not talking about the four year cycle, I'm talking about the 10 to 12 year cycle, when we are going to see crypto assets adopted globally in pretty much every facet of commerce around the world, just as the internet was, they can't stop it anymore. They can't fight it. So they have to join it. And they have to appear like they're on the front line helping young people get involved. No, they're not. They realize now that the game is up. Too many people know what's going on with the cartels. That is the banking system and the biggest Ponzi scheme in the history of humanity, which is fiat. And they are trying to join this race. But they can't. Even if they offer this service now, we don't need banks. Remember, when you open a wallet or create a wallet, you're not opening a bank account per se. You are creating a bank, your own bank, a bank where no one can stop your transactions, steal your money, put fake rates on it or fees. It is your money. And I trust you can feel the passion in my voice here. The reason why I'm so passionate about this is because I am trying my best to help you build your wealth, not by selling you anything. I don't own Bitcoin. That is, no one owns Bitcoin. It is for everyone. Just as no one owns the internet, no one owns Bitcoin, but they can all be part of it. And yet we've got these centralized bodies who have for years been saying, no, don't get involved in that stuff. Keep your money with us because we're financial institutions who are looking out for your best needs. It has all been a lie for so long and countless millions are waking up. And this was so predictable. It was so predictable that eventually the banks would start offering you Bitcoin as if it was theirs to offer, as if it was some type of share or stock that they could offer to you. They don't own Bitcoin and they don't need to sell it to you in the sense that you don't need them to be the middleman. Get your own Bitcoin bypass the banks, move away from the banks and be your own bank. That rant aside, let's read this article from the good people at the Financial Review. As we get into the second paragraph of the article, it reads, the move will make CBA the first Australian bank and just one of a handful of banks worldwide to offer customers access to cryptocurrencies which are created digitally with no physical form and are challenging traditional banking systems and fiat money. Look, I've got to stop there as soon as we get into it. What do you mean which are created digitally with no physical form? What do you think fiat is? Fiat is not created physically and is in a digital form. We know, and this is no secret, this isn't a conspiracy theory, this is open and transparent knowledge. If everyone went to the bank and tried to pull out their cash, there wouldn't be enough money in the bank. Moreover, we also know that fiat is not backed by gold. So to get straight into this article and claim that digitally created assets have no physical form, well, how is that any different to money? I just highlight that because you can see traditional financial commentators are using this prehistoric language that is so misleading that says, oh, crypto is not real because you can't touch it. Well, when was the last time you touched all the value of the money in your bank account? When was the last time you touched an email? When was the last time you touched a Netflix movie or a Spotify account? Digital assets don't need a physical form because physical forms are prehistoric. There are places for physical forms, but it is not money. And to all you gold bugs out there who believe that the ultimate form of money is gold, I put these questions to you that no one has ever been able to answer with any form of legitimacy. How can I buy anything on Amazon or any site with a block of gold? How can I buy anything from the supermarket with a block of gold? 
how can I do any reasonable commerce with a block of gold when there is no method of shaving off a little bit of gold, testing for its purity, weighing it, moving it, storing it with any form of efficiency or legitimacy? Gold is dead. And if you say, well, all we need to do is put gold in a vault and then write a banknote against that gold, well, guess what? You've just created fiat, a system that is the biggest Ponzi scheme in the world. And if you go the other way and say, well, how about we get these blocks of gold and we digitize it and we represent it with a token? Well, why do you even need the gold? The only reason why you want the gold in the vault is because of its scarcity. And I'll tell you what's more scarce than gold. Bitcoin. How much gold is in the world? Well, we've mined about two Olympic-sized swimming pools full of gold out of the ground. But that's not all the gold in the world. We don't know how much gold is in the world. The greatest scientists, geologists, engineers, bankers, name your field of study. None of them. None of them can tell us how much gold there is in the world. However, a fifth grader with an internet connection can tell you exactly how much Bitcoin there is in the world. And they can tell you how much is circulating at any one time, how much hasn't been moved, and how much is yet to be mined. The fifth grader can tell you this. I can tell you this. Governments can tell you this. And you bet your bottom dollar that the banks can tell you this. They know this. And they know that both gold and fiat is dead. And if you also don't believe me that gold is dead, why is it not performing? If gold is so good and guaranteed to give you returns, how is it that over history we can see that gold has not gone up in price? And no, it hasn't gone up in price. Yes, most certainly the nominal amount has gone up, but that's not the real value. That's the nominal value. That amount reflects inflation. For many years, gold has maintained a consistent purchasing power, and that's great. But in recent years, it has in fact lost its purchasing power. So if you've entered into the gold markets thinking that you're going to get rich, I can prove that that's not the case because the numbers don't lie. Mathematics and numbers don't have an opinion. They're just numbers. But reading on, it marks a coming of age for digital currencies, which have been seen by some investors as hedges against decades of central bank profligacy, just as some central banks, including the Reserve Bank of Australia, have begun the long journey back to conventional interest rate policies. Cryptocurrency prices have surged, fallen, and surged again this year, as investors saw our alternative investment assets and speculated on their gains. CBA is preparing to announce its plans on Wednesday morning, which was this morning. It may also confirm partnerships with Gemini, a crypto exchange that would facilitate the trading and chain analysis, which provides compliance and intelligence services for transactions over blockchains, distributed ledgers that let Bitcoin and other coins such as Ether to operate without central bank oversight. That is absolute nonsense. Let's just break that down for a second. So, CBI, centralized third party. Gemini, centralized third party. And you're telling me that you need two more centralized third parties so you can buy and hold Bitcoin? They're just applying their old model. They're just applying their old model to new money. Think about it. When you use fiat, it's about going from you to a third party, to another third party provider, to another third party provider, back to another third party provider, each who take a cut along the way. So it makes your transaction, not yours, able to be stopped and blocked at any time, all for the privilege of you unknowingly paying a commission to each one of these centralized third parties. This is absolutely absurd. CBA declined to provide any information about its plans ahead of the formal announcement, but sources close to the project said the plan was designed to allow the more than 6.5 million users of the CBA app to buy Bitcoin and other crypto investments from next year and to view holdings inside the main banking app rather than the ComSec app. And if you're wondering what the ComSec app is, 
that is where you buy shares. So I'll go back a little step. To my international viewers, don't underestimate the size of the CBA. The CBA is massive. And from memory, going back to my economics uh, degree years, I recall, I think it was in the top 20 at one stage. It's currently at around 45 in the world, but it's definitely the biggest in Australia. But these numbers can be very fluid because it sometimes is difficult to gauge the assets and value of particularly a bank. Because remember, debts are credits, credits are debts, they've got assets hidden and not hidden, some are public. It is all just a mess. You've got offshore accounts to avoid taxes, you've got misleading information which leads to a royal commission fining banks millions of dollars for the billions of dollars that they've ripped off their customers. These banking systems are set up that it is in their best interest to lie and to rip off their customers because the fine from the government is far less than the profits they can make from ripping you off. This is not new news. This is how banks work. Do you know why we can't see what the banks are doing? Because they're not allowed to. But do you know why everyone can see what Bitcoin is doing? Because we're all supposed to. In the simplest terms, all business, one way or another, is actually a ledger. It took me a while to grasp that concept, but all business, one way or another, is a ledger. And banks are the epitome of this. And banks hold that ledger to themselves, close and tight, where they can do what they want with it, and often do corrupt it. Need proof? Look at the Royal Commission. Need more proof? Look at fractional reserve lending. Need more proof? Look at the whole fiat system. The Federal Reserve in the United States have lost complete control of their money supply to the point that both the M1 and M2 money supply data sets have blown out to the extent that they don't even know how much money they've got. They've printed so much of this useless crap that they don't even know how much they've got. And now the banks, who are in bed with these centralized bodies who print all this useless crap and created the global financial mess that we are in, now want to get a hold of the remedy that is fixing the mess that they made. It is an absolute disgrace, but completely predictable. Closing off on this part of the article, it says, the ability to pay for goods and services in the real economy with crypto holdings is being considered as an additional feature that could be added by CBA down the track, one source said. I'm not reading on, this crap is beyond nonsense. What do you mean the real economy? You're telling me that your money is the real economy and my money is not? If you want me to work for you, you're not going to pay me in your crap fiat. You're going to pay me in Bitcoin or we've got no commerce. If you want me to accept your useless fiat junk that has destroyed lives globally and is a money of war, whilst you criticize my money that is all inclusive and a money of peace, I say this, you had your opportunity, you had decades to do what was right by the people, and you blew it. You created the global financial crisis of 2008, and you're creating the next global financial crisis that is going to make the last one look like a tea party. These banks make me sick to the stomach. However, to finish on a positive note, this is in fact a crucial and predictable step in the crypto timeline. Banks have to try and join it. But I remind you, my crypto brothers and sisters of the world, you don't need the banks. You are now a bank. You are a bank. You hold your money. We determine the value of the money. We establish the networks to move this money around. We no longer need a centralized third party. Do not give these people control of your assets. Remember, not your keys, not your coins. Do not let these people hold your coins on your behalf because they won't really be yours. Just as they've been able to seize your fiat and capital assets of the past, if you give them control to hold your digital assets, they will never be yours. If you want to be 
on the right side of the greatest wealth shift in the history of humanity. Head on over to the crypto.land where you can do everything crypto on one safe and secure site. Control your money and your future on the crypto.land. I'm Adam Stokes. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Bye bye banks. And I'll talk to you next time.